Hi, Blanca. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, well, I'm very happy to see you again today because we are going to read together The Happy Prince from Oscar Wilde. And are there, well, we have already uh, been uh, reading the six pages and we are going to try to uh, read them all of them together and then we will be commenting some of the vocabulary. But before we start reading, I like that you uh, present again yourself and explain to us what you are doing. Tell us about well, yourself. Well, um, first of all, I'm glad to see you again here um, in our reading of the of this beautiful fairy tale. So um, I'd like to, to tell you that I'm currently um, studying uh, for my uh, most important uh, civil exam, uh, especially um, to be to become um, a professor of piano because it's my my it's my thing. <laughs> Um, so, uh, about English, um, I'm glad to say you that to tell you, sorry, that uh, two months ago, I get, I get, I got, sorry, the B2 uh, uh, English level. So, I hope that it will be a, a great um, reading. So, here we go. <laughs> Okay, so let's start uh, with uh, this happy prince. Uh, for those who don't know Oscar Wilde, I, I must say that he is a Victorian dramatist. So he was living in 1854 to 1900. So uh, it's important that you know this context in order to understand better his uh, literary style and his work. I'm not going to tell you many things about his life and his uh, and, and his career as a writer, but you can find more information in some of the uh, latest videos that I have uploaded. So let's start uh, Blanca with the with the Happy Prince that was written in 1888. Here we go. It says, high above the city on a tall column stood the statue of the Happy Prince. He was gilded all over with thin leaves of fine gold. For eyes, he had two bright sapphires and a large red ruby glowed it on his sword hilt. Sword hilt, I'm just going to say this, is the eh, empuñadura, ¿vale? Sword hilt. He was very much admired indeed. He's a beautiful as a weathercock. And weathercock is a una veleta, ¿vale? We marked one of the town councillors who wished to gain a reputation for having artistic taste, only not quite so useful, he added, fearing lest people should think him unpractical, which he really was not. Why can't you be like the happy prince? asked a sensible mother of her little boy who was crying for the moon. The happy prince never dreams of crying for anything. I'm glad there is someone in the world who is quite happy, muttered a disappointed man as he gazed at the wonderful statue. He looks just like an angel, said the charity children, as they came out of the cathedral in, the, in their bright scarlet cloaks and their clean white pinafores. And pinafores son como pichis, ¿vale? Como mandiles o pichis. How do you know, said the mathematician, mathematical master. You have never seen one. Ah, but we have in our dreams, answered the children. And the mathematical master frowned and looked very severe, for he did not, for he did not approve of children dreaming. Uh, and this is a story that is going to be told for children to sleep and start dreaming. So it's interesting how he plays this comment here. One night there flew over the city a little swallow. His friends had gone away to Egypt six weeks before, but he had to stay behind for he was in love with the most beautiful reed. He had met her early in the spring as he was flying down the river after a big yellow moth. And moth is polilla, right? 
and he had been so attracted by her slender waist, es decir, esbelta cintura o figura, that he had stopped to talk to her. Shall I love you? said the swallow, who liked to come to the point at once. I, I like this expression, who liked to come to the point at once. And the reed made him a low bow. So, a low bow, a low bow. I don't remember now if it is a low bow or a low I bow. I think it's, yeah, I think it's low bow. I bow, think. right? Because it's like the saludo, no? Yeah, exactly. A low bow. Okay, thank you. So he flew round and round her, touching the, wa the water with his wings and making silver ripples. Yeah, las ondas, no? De plateadas. This was his courtship and it lasted all through the summer and courtship, todo el mundo entiende como corte. It is a ridiculous attachment, twittered the other swallows, twittered the other swallows. He has no money and far too many relations and indeed the river was quite full of weeds. Then when the autumn came, they all flew, flew away. After they had gone, he felt lonely and began to tire of his lady love. Cuando dicen to tire of his lady love, es que se empezó a cansar de ella. She has no conversation, he said, and I am afraid that she is a coquette, for she is coquette, mejor dicho, she is a coquette, for she is always flirting with the wind. No, I've got another expression, no? always flirting with the wind. And certainly, whenever the wind blew, the reed made the most graceful curtsies. Curtsies. I admit, that she is domestic, he continued. But I love traveling, and my wife, consequently, should love traveling also. Will you come away with me? He said finally to her. But the reed shook her, shook her head. She was so attached to her home. You have been tripling with me, he cried. Tripling with me is como que me has estado jugando conmigo, algo así. You have been tripling with me, he cried. I am off to the pyramids. Goodbye. And he flew away. All day long he flew, and at night time he arrived at the city. Where shall I put up? He said. I hope the town has made preparations. Then he saw the statue on the tall column. I will put up there, he cried. It is a fine position with plenty of fresh air. So he alighted just between the feet of the happy prince. I have a golden bedroom, he said softly to himself as he looked around and he prepared to go to sleep. But just as he was putting his head under his wing, a large drop of water fell on him. What a curious thing, he cried. There is not a single cloud in the sky. Stars are quite clear and bright, and yet it is raining. The climate in the north of Europe is really dreadful. Sorry, the climate. <laughs> the climate in the north of Europe is really dreadful. The reed used to like the rain, but that was merely her selfish, selfishness. Then another trap fell. What is the use of a statue if I cannot keep the rain off, he said. I must look for a good chimney pot, and he determined to fly away. But before he had opened his wings, a third drop fell, and he looked up and saw, oh, what did he, what did he see? The eyes of the happy prince were filled with tears, and tears were running down his golden cheeks. His face was so beautiful in the moonlight that the little swallow was filled with pity. Who are you? He said. I am the happy prince. Why are you weeping then? Asked the swallow. You have quite drenched me. And drenched is um, empapado. Like Anna, uh, tell me. <laughs> so I continue. When I was alive and had a human heart, answered the statue, I did not know what tears were for I lived in the palace of Sans Souci, where sorrow is not allowed to enter. 
In the daytime, I played with my companions in the garden, and in the evening, I led the dance in the great hall. Round the garden ran a very lofty wall, but I never cared to ask what lay beyond it. Everything about me was so beautiful. My courtiers called me the happy prince, and happy indeed I was, if pleasure be happiness. So I lived, and so I died. And now that I'm dead, they have set me up here so high that I can see all the ugliness and all the misery of my city. And though my heart is made of lead, yet I cannot choose but weep. What? Is he not solid gold? Said the swallow to himself. He was too polite to make up any personal remarks out loud. Far away, continued the statue in a low musical voice. Far away in a little street, there is a poor house. One of the windows is open and through it, I can see a woman seated at a table. Her face is thin and worn, and she has coarse red hands, all pricked by the needle, for she is a seamstress. She is embroidering passion flowers on a setting gown of, uh, sorry, for the loveliest of the queens made of honors to wear at the next court ball. In a bed in the corner of the wood, her little boy is lying ill. He has a fever and is, uh, sorry, and is asking for oranges. His mother has nothing to give him but river water, so he is crying. Swallow, swallow, little swallow. Will you not bring her the ruby out of my swarif? My feet are fastened so this, uh, sorry, to this pedestal and I cannot move. I am waited for in Egypt, said the swallow. My friends are flying up and down the Nile <clears throat> and talking to the large lotus flowers. Soon they will go to sleep in the tomb of the great king. The king is there himself in his painted coffin. He is wrapped in yellow lining and embalmed with spice, spices. Round his neck is a chain of pale green jade, and his hands are like wither, wither, withered leaves. Exactly, well done. I'm going to repeat some of the words, maybe just in case. Merrily, leaning, and sword hilt, just in case. Okay, so I'm going to continue with the number three, the page number three. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Will you not stay with me for one night and be my messenger? This, this can, we can say that this is the late, mo late motif of the story. No? Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Will you not stay with me for one night and be my messenger? The boy is so thirsty and the mother so sad. I don't think I like boys, answered the swallow. Last summer, when I was staying on the river, there were two rude boys, the miller's sons, who were always throwing stones at me. They never hit me, of course. We swallows fly far too well for that. And besides, I come of a family famous for its agility. But still, it was a mark for disrespect. But the happy prince looked so sad that the little swallow was sorry. It is very cold here, he said, but I will stay with you for one night and be your messenger. Thank you, little swallow, said the prince. So the swallow picked out the great ruby from the prince's sword and flew away with it in his beak over the roofs of the town. Beak, acordaros el pico, vale? He has the cathedral tower where the white marble angels were sculptured. También es una visión, ¿no? This is another vision of the church uh, with the angels. The little swallow is like an angel because it's a messenger, ¿no? Yesterday, on Sunday, we were celebrating the three archangels, ¿no? Arcángeles. Great right. um, uh, San Rafael, Gabriel y Miguel. And <clears throat> obviously, this, this has to be mentioned. No? Uh, he passed the cathedral, the cathedral tower where the white marble angels were sculptured. He passed by the palace and heard the sound of dancing. A beautiful girl came out of the balcony 
with her lover. How wonderful, how wonderful the stars are, he said to her, and how wonderful is the power of love. I hope my dress will be ready in time for this state boy, she answered. I have ordered passion flowers to be embroidered on it, but the seamstress are so lazy. And the seamstress on las bordadoras, no las, mm, podemos decir las bordadoras perfectamente, eh, que están haciendo ese trabajo fino, no? They are eh, embroidering the passion flowers on the dress. He passed over the river and saw the lanterns hanging to the mast of the of the ships. He passed over the get the ghetto and saw the old Jews bargaining with each other and weighing out money in copper scales. Copper scales, no? Están pesando el dinero en esas balanzas de copper is bronze. At last, he came to the poor house and looked in. The boy was tossing feverishly, feverishly on his bed, and the mother had fallen asleep. She was so tired. In, in he hoped, es decir, y dentro saltó, ¿no? And led the great ruby, and laid the great ruby on the table beside the woman's thimble. Then he flew gently round the bed, fanning the boy's forehead with his wings. Qué gracioso, ¿no? Como with his wings, como tenía mucha fiebre el niño, pues le estaba abanicando con sus alas. How cool I feel, said the boy. I must be getting better. And he sank into a delicious slumber. A delicious slumber es un sueño ligero, eh, pero a, a, en este caso es agradable, ¿no? Slumber es sueño ligero y delicious es, pues eso, delicioso. Un delicioso sueño ligero. Entró en un delicioso sueño ligero después de estar sufriendo muchísima fiebre y estar malo. Pues, se agradecerá. Dice, then the swallow flew back to the happy prince and told him what he had done. It is curious, he remarked, but I feel quite warm now, although it is so cold. That is because you have done a good action, said the prince. And the little swallow began to think, and then he fell asleep. Thinking always made him sleep. When they broke, he flew down to the river and had a bath. What a remarkable phenomenon, said the professor of or ornithology as he was passing over the bridge. A swallow in winter. And he wrote a long letter about it to the local newspaper. This is interesting, you know, how suddenly uh, he introduced some scientist that is and a specialist in ornithology and suddenly see the swallow in the middle of, of winter and he's writing to the newspaper about this uh, situation. Everyone quoted it. It was full of so many words that they could not understand. No, so, so this is beautiful. I think that he, Oscar Wilde here is uh, showing also his master in writing, in writing a story, in, in and how many perspectives, no? These the ornithologists, the counselors, the people that are rich, the people that are poor, very interesting. But tonight I go to Egypt, said this swallow, and he was in high spirits at the prospect. At the prospect means in in lo que iba a suceder, no? At the prospect, en ver que eso iba a ser posible. He visited all the public monuments and sat a long time on top of the church, the steeple, on top of the church is steeple. Uh, that uh, steeple means uh, the tower or also the, uh, lo que llamamos nosotros, campanario, ¿vale? Wherever he went, the sparrows chirped and said to each other, what a distinguished stranger. So he enjoyed himself very much. When the moon rose, he flew back to the happy prince. Have you any commissions for Egypt? He, he cried. I am I'm just starting. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Will you not stay with me one night longer? I am waiting for in Egypt, answered the swallow. Tomorrow my friends will fly up to the second cataract. The river horse catches there among the bulrushes, and on a great granite throne sits the god Memnon. All night long, he watches the stars, and when the morning star shines, 
he utters one cry of joy, and then he is silent. At noon, the yellow lions come down to the water's edge to drink. They have eyes like green bar, uh, sorry, berries. 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 Yeah, thank you, Anna. It's a <laughs> then, Remember, that it's, it's a gemstone, and it's uh, in español, berilos. Lo hemos aprendido las dos juntas hoy, o sea, que fenomenal. Berries. Thank you, Anna. Uh, so, I repeat, I repeat it. Yes. They have eyes like green berries, and their roar is louder than the roar of the cataract. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. It's the leitmotiv that Anna told before. So, far away across the city, I see a young man in a garret. Garret means uh, this one in Spanish. Um, I continue. He's leaning over a desk covered with papers, and in a tumbler by his side, there is a bunch of withered violets. So, here we have a tumbler um, that means a, a basho. Um, and, here, and here we have as well we, um, withered violets. That means um, uh, violets and flowers uh, that are um, marchitándose. His hair is brown and crisps, and his lips are red as a pomegranate. And he has a large and dreamy eyes. He's trying to finish a play for the director of the theater, but he's too cold to write anymore. There's no fire in the grate, and hunger has made him faint. I will wait with you one night longer, said the swallow, who really had a good heart. Shall I take him another ruby? Alas, I have no ruby now, said the prince. My eyes are, are all that I have left. They are made of rare sapphires, sorry, sapphires, which were brought out of India a thousand years ago. Pluck out one of them and take it to him. He will sell it to the euler and buy food and firewood and finish his play. Dear prince, said the swallow, I cannot do that. And he began to weep. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Do as I command you. So swallow plucked out the prince's eye and flew away to the student's garret. It was easy enough to get in as there was a hole in the roof. Through this, he darted and came into the room. The young man has his, sorry, has his head buried in his hands, so he did not, he did not hear the fl uh, flutter of the bird's wings. And when he looked up, he found a beautiful sapphire lying on the withered violets. I am beginning to be appreciated, he cried. This is from some great admirer. Now I can finish my play. And he looked quite happy. The swallow flew down to the harbor, that means the, the port. He sat on the mast of a large vessel and watched the sorry and watched the sailors howling big chest out of the hold with ropes. Heave ahoy! They shouted as the chest came up. I am going to Egypt, cried the swallow, but nobody minded. And when the moon rose, they flew back to the happy prince. I am come to bid you goodbye, he cried. Swallow, swallow, little swallow, said the prince. Will you not stay with me one night longer? It is winter, answered the swallow, and the chill snow will soon be here. In Egypt, the sun is warm on the green palm trees, and the crocodiles lie in the mud and look lazy about them. My companions are building a nest in the temple of Baalbek, and the pink, sorry, and the pink and white doves are watching them and cooing to each other. Dear prince, dear prince, sorry, I must leave you, but I will never forget you. And next spring, I will bring you back two beautiful jewels in place of those you have given away. The ruby shall be redder than a red rose. Here we have a alliteration. 
and the sapphire shall be sorry, uh, shall be as blue as the great sea. In the square below, said the happy prince, there stands a little match girl. Uh, that means a, a girl who sends a, a una chica que vende fósforo. She has let her match, matches fall in the gutter and they are all spoiled. Her father will beat her if she doesn't not bring, bring home some money and she is crying. She has no shoes or stockings and her little head is bare. Pluck out my other eye and give it to her and her father will not beat her. Exactly, well done. I'm going to repeat some of the words just in case. For example, when you said watched, remember the people that are studying English, remember the ED ending and we have to pronounce T. We also have uh, the harbor, that is the F sound at the end. Also with mud, the mud and look lazy about them, you know, in the uh, when they say, and the crocodile, and the crocodiles lie in the mud, no? It's in the mud, it sería el, el barro, no? Mud. And the, the, the rest, I think you pronounce them very well. Jewels again, cooing to each other, no? This, the, the dogs cooing to each other. Me encanta la palabra cooing. Yo a partir de ahora voy a utilizar todo el rato, todo el ritmo. Me encanta, cooing. Um, y luego me encanta esta literación que has mencionado, the rubbish shall be redder than a red rose. Como buen músico que eres, eh, queda pues, fenomenal ¿no? esta combinación de palabras. The ruby shall be redder than a red rose. Es que no puede ser más, ¿no? de más literario esta repetición de la R. Luego lo otro varía, ¿no? And the sapphire shall be as blue as the great sea. Y de repente nos pone el blue del, de the great sea. Eh, y, y and soften, ¿no? Esta R de, repetida tantas veces. Esto lo hace un montón eh, Oscar Wilde, and I found that delicious. You know, the, he is very keen on details, ¿no? Que si la gota de le, que le cae al, al del suelo, ¿no? De repente, si la, la, la lágrima que está saliendo de, de Happy Prince. O sea, es súper preciso. Es como un orfebre haciendo orfebrería, ¿no? Eso es lo que tiene de belleza. Esta, esta manera de escribir de, de Oscar Wilde. Bueno, seguimos en la página 5. Ya nos queda solamente esta, la siguiente. 